Melissa, is it Kier or Kerr? Kier. Kier. Mine's with Kier. Okay. We're live whenever you're ready. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the author panel on productivity. Uh, I've got some great guests here today, um, Terry A. Wilson, Melissa Keir, Hildy McQueen, and Amy Rattan. And we are going to talk about uh, our tricks of the trade and staying productive, how that's changed over the course of the last few weeks with what's happening. Um, and of course, we're here to answer any and all questions. So feel free to ask whatever you, whatever you want. Um, so I thought we would start with you know, like a brief introduction, even though <laughs> we've all done a bunch of these, but a brief introduction, tell us uh, what you write and tell us how long you've been writing, if you could. Okay, I'm going to mute myself and we'll, we're just going to start at the bottom of my list, which is Terry. Is that cool? My name is Terry A. Wilson and I write paranormal romance and I've been writing since the end of 2018. I don't remember if there was anything else I was supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I'm so oh, unproductive already. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, how about you? Well, I'm Melissa Keir, and I've been writing small town romances uh, in a variety of different other genres from uh, about 2011. Oh, who's, who, sorry. Who's next up on my list? Um, Hildy. Hi, I'm Hildy McQueen, and I've been writing historical romance for the most part since 2012, I want to say. So, yeah. And I'm still writing historical romance, medieval right now, and some cowboys. And how about you, Amy? Oh, goodness. Um, so I've been writing a contemporary category romance for Harlequin since 2013, but I started my career way back in 2007. So that's as long as I've been writing. All right. Um, uh, I'm Molly O'Keefe. I'm trying desperately to change my screen so I'm not just staring at myself, which is freaking me out. <laughs> um, I've been writing uh, contemporary romance um, since like 2001. I mean, am I that old? I think... I think I am. So um, yeah, as Molly O'Keefe and M. O'Keefe, and now uh, women's fiction is Molly Fader. Um, so my next question for you guys, and this is <laughs> this is really where like get into it. I don't. It's like uh, when you have a baby and you want to talk about how much of the baby sleeps all the time, and you find people who want to talk about how much babies sleep. We want to talk about productivity. So get into your get into your schedule and your details. Um, so my question now is. What were you doing before? What what were the tricks you were using before that were really effective? And uh, has your productivity changed? Like what you were doing before, the tricks for productivity, how productive you were? Like, I mean, did, were you measuring by word count every day or how many books you were getting out? Can you give us that information and then let us know how it's changed in the last few weeks? No change, up, down, however it worked for you. And again, starting at the bottom again, Terry. Well, um, before all this stuff happened, I, the way I kept myself productive mostly was by um, external deadlines, ex somebody holding me accountable outside of myself. So I, when I worked with a publisher or I had a conference coming up that I had to get this book out by the conference, I had that, that deadline that I had when I had other people counting on me. And that really helped me a lot. But since then, what I realized is I was writing more for all those other people and for myself. So I kind of um, slowed down a little bit and I've, I've actually gone back and like reread some of those uh, how to write books and some of the trade publishing type books that we all have that you just toss aside so I can go back and go, oh, okay, that's what I should be doing. And, oh, let's go back and let's, let's take the time to go back and look at this and and so I think going forward from all of this, I really want to work more on holding myself accountable for myself, 
not so much holding myself accountable for somebody else. So I think that's how this has changed me a little bit. Can I ask a, I'm going to ask you a follow-up question. Um, So when you say that you were sort of account, you felt accountable towards other people. So your editors and and readers, um, how did you like, did it, were you starting to get burned out? Were you starting to, it was harder? Okay. Yeah, it was, um, I, I look at, I just recently went back and read a book that I published in December at the end of the last year. And then I read a book that I had published like in, in February at the beginning of the year. And it was like, oh, in February, it, things are good. And it was smoothing and I really liked it. And then in December, it was like, oh, I really rushed this a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what is this crap? Who wrote this? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, um. Yeah, I think it was just, um, I, I was getting burned out because I, I just uh, was too driven to just get it out there, get it out there, get it out there, get it out there. And, and so, so at your most productive, like how much were you were you producing? Um, last year I did 17 either short stories in an anthology or novellas. Wow. Wow, so, that's a yeah. lot of work. Yeah, it was a lot. And of, but I should say, of those, four of them were done in 2018. So that's 13. That's a little bit more reasonable. It's like almost one, like one, one and a twelfth a month. But um, what I realized well, there is, too, is that's reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> what I realized too is it's just I wanted to just uh, work more too on the marketing part of it. That was. You know, I was I wasn't doing the marketing because I was so busy trying to get the words out. So that's really interesting. That's really interesting, Melissa. What? what how about you? Oh, you're Melissa. You're muted. There, there you go. <laughs> it took me a minute to get the thing working. Uh, so prior to this, um, I had always been a full time uh, outside of writing employed person so i would be working during the day and then spending about an hour hour and a half in the evening working on writing my stories and so my time to write would be before i went to bed and i would always set a goal for myself that i would have to get a a chapter done or about 100 words um, or a thousand words depending upon where i was at in the story i had to have these things done before i could read a book or before i could go to bed so in addition to all of this, healthy. <laughs> I in go to bed. All of this, now wait a minute, here, here's the other thing. In addition to having a full-time job, I also had two other side jobs. So I was working as a full-time teacher. I was working as a movie reporter on the weekends and would appear on Monday's radio show in a local radio station. And I also own my own publishing house where I publish other people. So in the meantime, I'm juggling getting formatting and reading through other people's work and trying to do all that. So, and being a teacher isn't a nine to five job. So I was grading papers at the dinner table and doing all this. So when my writing took off, I cut back on my teaching schedule, went to substituting because I love being around the kids and I can't stop that. But that gave me more time to do the other things. And so I still kept to that balance of I'm going to write this much And it's going to be done before I go to bed or it's going to be done before I get to do something I like. Fast forward, we've moved. We went from Michigan to South Carolina. Uh, I lived a month in a hotel room with my dog, my cat, and my husband. One bedroom, one, you know, studio hotel room with a microwave uh, while they were finishing our place. And my writing after that, suddenly it felt like it stopped. I just felt like I could, because I wrote an entire novella while I was in that one month hotel room. I felt like it was just so much pressure. It was so much that it stopped. So we moved in and now I've been doing a lot more walking. I haven't had all of the other jobs because I can't do a radio show in Michigan on the air. If I'm here in South Carolina, the commute is a little hard. So um, what I've been doing is going back to that tried and true holding myself accountable. I need to get this much writing done before I can read, or I need to get this much writing done before I can do something else. And I find that my best time for writing is that evening time when I'm sitting in bed with my laptop, the dog snuggled up, my husband's snoring. And that just seems to be the time that I 
feel most comfortable with the writing. But during the rest of the day, I'm still doing things like planning. Where's that story going to go? I take uh, five miles of walks now where I try and think about, okay, let's talk the story through in my head. What am I going to be doing? And of course, I have lists and calendars to kind of keep me on track. And is is that is that steady as she goes through this the last few weeks? Has have things changed at all, or is your is your like if the system continue to work? No, like pulling teeth right now, trying to get because I'm a person who's very emotional anyway, and so my characters tend to be very emotional, and so with the idea of I don't feel like doing anything. Do I want to put clothes on and get out of bed? Uh, you know, I try and get out and enjoy the sunshine because, you know, Michigan people tend to be lacking vitamin D. So I'm not missing that here, but I just need to get myself up and motivated more. And then the writing slowly starting to come back in the last probably week I've gotten another 5,000 words down really quickly. So. And are you like, do you go by word count? Like you have to get so much of a word count in or you, a chapter or. I usually, how does do it word count. I usually do word count. I usually try to get, you know, like I say, I set myself a goal. Okay. I want to get about 1000 words in tonight. Oh, okay. I want to get, you know, and so I usually set myself a goal. And if I am stuck in the, like if that word count sticks in the middle of a chapter or sticks in the middle of what's going on, I'll try and finish that. Yeah, that's interesting. Hildy, how about you? Hi. Well, <laughs> before this, before our wonderful self-isolation, I was a, a social butterfly. I managed to have a very super over-the-top active social life of an event planner, mostly volunteer mm -hmm. event planning. So that kept me busy. I planned activities or events for like 50 to 100 people every other month. I have my own book club. I also participated in Bible studies and helped run that. I volunteered at my church. I uh, have lunch once a week with a group of friends. And uh, on top of that, you know, of course, my writing and my home life and trip, trip to Atlanta every other weekend to visit my daughter. So that was all in the middle of all that. I was managing to write. But I'm a, one of those people that avoids what I have to get done, especially when it's a deadline set by somebody else. So when this whole thing happened with the self-isolation, I said, oh, my goodness, I am going to get so much done. I'm going to write spend my writing and do this, this stuff because I'm going to have all this time. I don't have all that social stuff is gone. But uh, like Melissa said, for some reason, I think creatives are we're like empathic in a way. And all the anxiety and all the worry and everything, the news just kind of clogs, clogs our creativity for some reason. And I have heard it from many other writers. And I think for the first, um, I want to say probably three weeks or four, maybe, I, I was like, could barely figure out what to do. I was very busy here at home doing, you know, sitting on social media, playing games on my phone. But and organizing, you know, I vacuumed my closet one day. Because <laughs> I guess I had to be done. But my writing it really it suffered. Did. And so it wasn't until probably maybe last week that I found myself once again being able to, I don't know if we're getting used to this new way of living and maybe that has settled our minds, but I found myself finally being productive again. I'd never, I'd, I'm not going to write those long historical tomes that I wanted to write, but I will be, I have been productive in the way that I finally finished the book. And I was like, that was a major accomplishment for me because, and it, and, I, and at the same time, you know, I felt like um, I was beating myself up. I was like, why am I not writing? Oh my God, I have all this time. What am I doing? But I think many people, and, well, I don't know about other people, but that's what I found myself having, struggling to get um, creative. Yeah. I would totally agree. Mm -hmm. I would, and I, I, and it is funny. I do feel like there's something shifted in the last week, and I don't know if it's that right. like it takes 42 days to make a new habit. I can't. I don't know what whatever it is. I feel like we've yeah, all. It could you know, be. It's a life it now. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So, if you don't mind me asking, Hildy, like what, what are you? What was your word count before? Is that how you measured like productivity? Mm -hmm. What's your word count now as you're ramping back up? If you don't mind sharing it, right. 
my word count usually is, uh, and I, I have a schedule, but I do, my word count is 3,000 words a day. Wow. And, and so, and it usually came pretty easy to me as long as I set myself a schedule and did it and I know how, how long it takes me to do it. Do it now. I and then during this time, I was have been struggling to get a thousand words done, just struggling. And then the last couple of um, like last week, I managed to get almost three thousand a day. Not quite, but I'm getting close to back to where I used to. Used to. <laughs> they were ugly. Were they ugly words? My words are not pretty right now. <laughs> you know, I I did do a lot a lot of rewrites. <laughs> You're right. And on top of that, it's like. The creativity is, uh, you, yeah. I felt like I was forcing certain things too. But it, it's on the page. That's good for you. Right. For you. Amy, let's hear from you. Amy, you managed oh, to finish a book. Like you just had a huge deadline and then rewrites right after it. Yep. That so I had a, excessive I had a deadline coming and I'm pretty structured. I've actually been learning since 2018 how to best manage to, to avoid burnout because I had, I had to burn out. I wrote like six books in one year. So it's like 300,000 words. I don't know. Um, so I, I was already trying to manage this and I was structuring and I'm like, I write better in the morning. I write better if I do 15 minute increments and take a little bit of a break. This is great. Pandemic hit right in the middle of a deadline. And I just went like, I couldn't write. I was watching the news every day. Mm -hmm. I learned to turn off the news. And the words started coming back. Yes, then I sort of had to race to make the deadline and then sent it to my editor. Thought, oh, good, I'll have a week to, a week to just like, she's like the next day, here it is, here's your revision. <laughs> Funny, she doesn't have anything to do right now either. <laughs> right? And they were like, yes, because my, my book was, the pandemic crept into my book. I had 20 pages of grocery shopping. <laughs> So they're like going grocery shopping. They're like talking about, oh, nutmeg. And like just picked up a cart. Oh, he live in the store because he's a single dad. It's great. And she's like, there's quite a lot about shopping in here. You're supposed to be writing a medical romance. What? <laughs> so yeah, it's funny how it sort of just crept its way in. Yeah. <laughs> Creep in. I, I yeah. tend to write fairly depressing characters in, in at the heart of it. And yeah, the book that I'm working on now where the, like Hildy said, like it's the, the pages, the words are pretty ugly. Man, they are yeah. bummer characters. <laughs> <laughs> so what, so what, what's changed? So you're kind of back on track with the productivity tips that you had before working in the morning yeah. and you have yeah. young kids at home. Are you up before they're awake? Yeah. Yeah. I used to work at night and I would, I could stay up to midnight, one o'clock in the morning. I can't stay up past nine anymore. I don't know what happened. I We're just, all I'm, yeah. So I'm just, I get up at six or seven when my husband has to get up to work because he'll work in the basement. And because that's where I sort of banished him because he was working up here with me. And I'm like, you're too loud. Get, you know, get off, go in the basement. Um, and yeah, I just take time to think and just, quiet time but it's very structured here very structured it has to be so um another question that i have for the panel is um are you a plotter or are you a pantser and how much does that play into your productivity um we're going to start at the bottom again sorry terry are you cool going first yeah that's fine um i am actually probably what they call a plotzer um, I try to, every time I write a book, I try to have an outline, but I tend to change it as I go along. Um, and so, and then after I've read that first draft, I don't miss anything. So um, I find that if I, if I held myself to that uh, outline, it was just too stressful. And it was like, I just shut down and I couldn't write anymore. So it's like, oh, nope, that's not supposed to happen until chapter six. And your character in your head is like, mm, no, no, sorry, it's happening now. <laughs> so I, um, so that that's what works for me though. Um, I always, I use a Scrivener. So I have my notes window open at the same time. And I, I always ask myself like, okay, what now? 
what now, what now, what now? And so then when I have that, I'll make a note of that so I can carry that note into the next chapter. So I guess that's kind of like outlining, but again, it's more of a hybrid is yeah. what I do. But the idea is that because of that note system, every time you sit down, you kind of know what you're writing that day. Is that, would you say that's right. clear? Yeah. Right. Yeah. How about you, Melissa? Plotter or Panther? Well, I'm more of a pantser. So the only thing that I have is an outline in my head of the story, you know, who the characters are, where they're supposed to go, and what is the big event that happens. And I know, you know, that they're all going to live happily ever after. And so what I start with is I start on the page with the first words and then work my way through. But sometime as I get to the middle of the story, something happens and I'm like, oh, I know this part. So I'll move ahead and I'll write a part and then I'll go back. So I don't necessarily no. write from from first word to the to the end, but sometimes I'll start writing and then I'll throw in the ending and come back and work in the middle and move back and forth in the story that way. And do you find that um, you have and, and actually, Terry, we're going to go back so you can answer this question too. You edit as you go, or do you you finish it and then you have a giant edit? And does is editing harder because you're a a pantser, or do you, how do you manage it? Um, well, I'm a horrible edit as I work. And sometimes as I'm sitting there with the, putting the words on the page, I'm like, no, she can't. No, that's the hand talking. That's not the first, you know, and I have to go back and do that. So every time I write, I go back and I reread what I've written again. So during mm -hmm. my time, I will constantly reread the story over and over and over again. Um, and so it's not a horrible edit at the end. As a matter of fact, you know, my, a couple of times my editors come back and said, well, you just need to do these few things because, you know, I've seen the book so many times. Um, she really targets the things that I, I've missed. Um, and she's been my editor for a long time. So we kind of get each other and she knows what to look for are my mistakes. But yeah, it, it can be a challenge getting my head shut off to no, yeah. we're not editing now. We're putting the words down. Yeah. And sorry, Terry, do you mind answering that? Um, I might go back and do an edit for content content as I'm writing, but um, I tend to wait until I do all the grammar and all that stuff like that at the end. Um, when I compile it and put it all together, because I found that when I just did like a chapter at a time, for me, I needed that continuity of the whole story or it just didn't make sense. And so, um, I'll go back and edit for like, uh, like for instance, if, you know, if I'm going to have a shootout in chapter four, but in chapter one, I made them pacifists, I have to figure out how to go back and change that to chapter one so that they're not pacifists. You know, I do stuff like that, but I mostly wait till the end. Okay. Hildy, how about you? So the question is, are you a platter, plotter or a pantser? And then how does that affect your editing process at the end of the book or during the book? I want to be a platter. <laughs> 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 I wonder what that is. I, <laughs> well, I have a, a strange process, I guess. I, I start writing without a, too much of a plan. I kind of have to know his arc or her arc. Sometimes I don't know both of theirs at the same time, but I might. I have mm -hmm. to know whoever I'm starting the story off with. So then I'll start and open the book with a um, scene where the he, with the hero normally. And then I'll start going into the story there, trying to figure out, you know, his motivation, his background, what's going on. And then I normally will go, okay, so what kind of partner makes the best partner for him? It's kind of like I'm figuring out the story as I write. And then once I figure that out, then I'll sit down and do a very loose outline of, okay, the next scene is going to be this and then and this. But I'll maybe do three scenes and not the whole entire story. Because in my head, I still don't know how it's going to mm -hmm. end. And one of the things is like, uh, I think Melissa said, or, once I get to the middle of the story, usually I get stuck. I have to find, you know, the big dark moment or the big inciting incident. And once that happens, I kind of have to figure out, okay, this is going to be the rest of their story. So which way should I do it? And sometimes it is at that point that I get down and dirty and will make an outline to make sure that everything fits in. Mm -hmm. And lots of times I also have to go back and, and say, well, you know, you know, chapter two, because I'm not, didn't plot it out or anything. I said this, but that doesn't make sense towards the end of the story. So I will have to go back and 
make some changes, but usually I make a note and, but I don't go back and do anything until the book is done. And then I'll go back and read and I have my notes about things that I need to go back and change or check for, or things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of annoying in a way because sometimes I'll just change things and, and don't write it down. So then I have to, you know, read very carefully to make sure that things don't, yeah. work. there's no conflicts, but, but that's the way I write. And I've tried other ways and it doesn't work. Yeah, it's funny sometimes like some characters or some plot points, they arrive and they're so fully formed. Like right. you're, just, oh, you're just like, oh, well, yeah, here exactly. we go. And, and then sometimes you just have to like write around this character uh -huh. for like 20,000 words for them to just finally show up in the middle of the night. And you're like, oh, that's okay. Thanks for showing up now. It's been a week, you know, but it is. I've, I've written an entire book and it just never, you're right. Mm -hmm. I was never like, okay, what is it about the story? I love the story. Everything seems, and then I finally had to sit down and realize he doesn't really, that's not the woman for him. And then oh, I was wow. like, this sucks because she's totally <laughs> wrong for him. So I had to go back and uh, find another a heroine and kind of change a lot of things about her and it's funny because right. i couldn't just rewrite her i kind of felt like i had to totally remove her and write a different one and that really really put me behind yeah, no kidding no kidding uh how about you amy so the question was um are you a plotter or pantser and then how that affects your editing or how if you edit as you go so yeah i think i'm in between as well i have to do an outline for my editor so she has some idea of what i'm going to do um, and whether it fits in with what the line is looking for and stuff. Um, but they know now after I don't know, 27 some odd books uh, that sometimes it comes out in my first draft. Yeah, I'm the same. Sometimes the hero is finally like, this is my problem, right? At the, you know, 25,000 words in. I'm like, why couldn't you figure this out? <laughs> at the freaking beginning. <laughs> so, I gave you so many chances to tell me what was wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, it wasn't that, like, yeah. So for me, it's because everything, I, what I've been learning through what my Clifton strengths are with the, the Write Better Faster, which was how I started on this process of becoming more productive and not avoiding burnout, was I have to think. I, no matter what I do, like, I can't change the fact that it has to sit there and percolate in my head and then it just kind of explodes out of me like Ugh. and then I, yeah I do not um, revise as I go um, that happens after it comes out in the dump That's and so it. yeah pretty much it's like vomit like the last book definitely was like that with lots of stuff um, but yeah like I felt bad because some people were like I didn't have any revisions on this book and I'm like oh, I must be a crappy writer, but no, it's just my process. <laughs> it's just the way. So now I've learned to do that. I don't feel as bad. I'm like, yep, I'm going to have a round of revisions. It's just the way that it is. And we'll fix it. But yeah. <laughs> well, that's the pleasure of working with a really good editor that gets, that understands you all the way up through the process. Have you ever yeah. had a book, you know, as, as, a, as a person who hands in a synopsis, have you ever had a book be just incredibly different or your editor come back and say, this is, we want it to be more like the synopsis? Um, well, I'll, I'll send in an outline and have one idea. And I, there's been like a few uh, author led quads or we were like, yeah, we wanted this. And the editors were like, no. And so we had to change it. Um, there's always some change to the to the outline for sure. I, I just try to give a rough because yeah, I really sometimes just don't know what's gonna what's gonna happen until it happens on the page. So um, yeah, there's been a few that I, they were like, no, we need more of this, or you know, this can't, you know, we're not looking for this right now, so you have to sort of switch and change. Um, but they usually guide me in that outline, like, okay, make sure you look at this, Amy, when you start your process. You know, watch out for this. Make sure you add this. So I go with that. Yeah. I um, hope they know me. <laughs> it's been a lot of books. And you've had the same editor the whole time, right? No, I have not. Oh. No. <laughs> no, I've, um, i trying to think. I had one for quite a long time. I had my original editor that bought me, had me for two books. She left. Then I had an editor for a very long time. And then she left. Had another editor for for a few she she she's still there but she switched focus 
And now I'm with my current editor. Our first book together actually just came out this month. So. Oh wow. I'm hoping she learn. She's learning me. She. I. I think we get along quite well because she's quite funny and. Oh good. Know, her little her little notes in the revision. I was cracking up laughing. She's like, yeah. Just like perfect. maybe we can cut this back here. <laughs> so um, my next question is, what is the like the productivity advice that we've all heard? Right. What is the worst productivity advice or that you've the, the advice, productivity advice that absolutely does not work for you and has never worked for you? And what is the best advice you've gotten regarding productivity? So we're going to start again with Terry at the bottom. No one else sees my list. I'm just like. <laughs> um, probably the best advice I got as far as productivity goes um, have multiple ways of writing so I have an app on my phone I have my iPad I have I always have paper and pencil or paper and pen um, I have my laptop that I carry with me a lot I have two kids that I drive around constantly well I used to drive them around before all this stuff happened and so I sit in the parking lot a lot and so I always have something that I can write on because you never know when an idea is going to hit you. Um, so that was probably the best advice that I ever got was to be able to do it in multiple formats. Um, the is worst it, advice I ever, go ahead. Is it just like a brain thing for you? Like it just, like it's just different enough that your brain wakes up and, you know, starts firing again or what do you like, is that, what do you think it's, that's about? I think sometimes I, I haven't like been had an official diagnosis, but I think as I get older, I get more um, like attention deficit like. <laughs> and so I, I have, you know, I'll be on and I see inspiration everywhere. So um, I see Melissa there with last weekend we were in a cowboy um, panel and I was at the grocery store and in walked a cowboy who ordered a sandwich from the deli. And I got my phone out real quick because I was like writing things down to, to think about how he looked so that I could remember it and add it to a story later on down the road. So I don't know if it's just I, I my synapses work differently. And it's just I, I forget, you know, that's the other thing, too, is if I don't write it down, I'll forget it. <laughs> and then I'll be like, oh, wait, the truth. <laughs> you know. Did he have short hair? Did he have long hair? What was it he, what was he ordered or something like that? Um, probably the worst advice I got was to, um, uh, to actually, which maybe goes counterproductive to this class, but to force a word count every single day. Um, because then for like, I, I mean, some days you're doing good just to get 10 words. Some days it's doing good just, you know, it was a dark and stormy night, and that's the only thing that comes out of your head. But if you force yourself to, I have to have 3,000 words, or I'm not going to get up from this desk to go do something, for me, I tend to beat myself up if I can't get that. So I try to do, like, scenes. I think Hildy was talking about scenes. Like, I try to get my scenes done. And sometimes... Um, my scenes may not be 3,000 words. My scenes may only be 1,500 or something like that. So, or sometimes my scenes may be 36,000 or something, you know, it's not that much. <laughs> Good Lord, that's a long scene, but uh, 3,600. <laughs> so that's, that's probably what I try to avoid is just sitting down and I have to get the it's funny. I, I feel like that piece of advice, because advi I'm I, I'm sort of that way too. Melissa was talking about it. I'm a bit like, like sewn to my word count. And it's when that bit of advice is working, I feel like it's, this is really working. I'm getting so much done. I'm getting it done early so I can go out and do these things. But then when it starts to slide, I have to be aware of it and like go, okay, ease up. Because you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're beating yourself up over, you know, 500 words, just calm down. So it's one of those, like, when I'm feeling good, it's great advice. When I'm feeling crappy, it's terrible advice. But yeah, yeah. But that's good stuff. thank you. Melissa, how about you? Well, I, I agree with what you're saying, Molly. I mean, it's when it's going well, it's going absolutely well. And when it's going horrible, it's horrible. 
So for me, um, I like having, like what Terry said about multiple ways of doing it. My best advice is talk it out. So I like to talk it out, whether I talk it out with my husband and we're standing, you know, on vacation and we're looking out at the river and I'm like, here, let me tell you this idea and what's going to happen next. Okay, so this is, and he'll be like, okay, whatever. But he, I mean, he listens at least. And so I, I talk it through with him or if I'll talk it through with myself in the shower or while I'm walking or doing something. The worst advice for me was sit your butt in the chair and write. It's that I know that I have to write every day. But if you put me in that chair and I look at that screen and I look at that screen and I look at that screen and the words aren't coming, then no amount of sitting in that chair is going to help me. And so right. that's why I'm getting up and I'm doing these other things. Like I'm going for walks or I'm going out and looking at the alligators because I take pictures of them every day. So if I'm going out and doing something, that's a hobby. <laughs> yes, and I'm getting them all and I'm keeping track of them. So yeah, they call me the gator girl here. I'm crazy. But I, I am trying to like keep track of things. But those ideas, like Terry said, they'll show up in a story. You know, or, you know, something that feeling that thought I I have to not just sit there. If I just sit there, I just end up staring at the game and then it gets worse. So, yeah, and it's like because I, I and I've been a person who said button chair, you know, like I've been a person who's given that advice. And I and I I feel like it's it's beginner advice. I want to write learn. how I want to write a book. I'm halfway through a book. I've been halfway through a book for like two years. What do I do? And my advice is always sit in the chair and write. It won't happen. Unless you're working. And then that is the advice that once, once you're past that hump and you're going to your career, turns around and bites you. Like it just, it's like the leading, like leads you right towards burnout, you know? Molly, I was just going to say, I think it's good that you, that we do sit down and write every day, but I think it's that word count, you know, like just, it has to be 3000, like that's a magical number or something. But I do think, you know, we need to exercise that creative part of our brain somehow every day. I think that's good. Right. And, and I agree with you, Terry, on that, because I think as a teacher, that's one of the things that I've often taught the kids. Yeah. The hard part for me is, is that if I if I anything that I'm forced to do, I'm not going to do. So whether it's the word count or whether it's you're going to sit here and do it right now, you know that if I'm sitting here right now and I'm going to have to finish this plate of food, I'm not going to finish this plate of food just because I'm stubborn enough that way. So with that being said, I've got to find a way of doing it, whether it's now, I'm now, instead of sitting in this chair, I'm now laying on the floor. <laughs> or I, you know, I have a real word count. <laughs> I have to find some way of, of doing it that's different and unique that's going to keep me interested. You know, like you said, your ADHD or whatever, that you have to do something different. Because if we constantly tell people that you sit in the chair and write, that's one of the things that I, I do see as a teacher, the kids doing, they sit there and they're like, I have all these ideas and nothing comes. And what really the clue is, is they have to get those words down on paper to practice because only through practice can we get better. But they have to learn how to put the words on the paper first. And we've had that experience. We know where all those ideas are. They don't. And so yeah. it's it's a double-edged sword with that. It, it, the, I get it. The, the act of like sitting, accessing the idea. Yeah, no, it is. It, it's totally a muscle that needs practice. How about you, Hildy? So it's the best advice you've gotten or and the worst advice you've gotten. I think the one of them that falls into both categories is to st uh, set a schedule and stick to it. It works until you, it doesn't. And I think like Melissa, if you tell me to do something and I have a deadline, oh my goodness, I will do everything to make, set myself up for failure. I will. So I do not like deadlines. I set very <laughs> loose deadlines. Even well, myself. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So like a lot of people are like, yeah, you know, make myself get this book done. I put it up for pre-order. Oh my gosh, no, don't do that. You're for not only are you setting yourself up for possibly, you know, to fail, but you're gonna write crap just to get it done. Yeah. So don't you know it's okay to set a loose deadline, but I don't know. Some people I might work for because they would, maybe they produce better under pressure. I don't know how that is, but it could be. So yeah, deadlines to me is like they're good if 
you have to stick to a deadline, but otherwise, um, yeah, don't make that your driving force. Uh, but I think one of the best things that has worked for me, and uh, another thing, um, I don't know who said something about the 3,000 word deadline, or the 3,000 word goal. That's another thing. If you know, it's good goal to have those goals, but also if you can learn not to beat yourself up if you don't make those goals. As long as I'm striving for that, if I'm getting 2,500 and I'm done for that day because I wrote a scene and it ended well and I'm on a high note and I'm like, am I going to really sit here and write another 500? No, I don't want to. So I don't. I don't beat myself up if I don't make the 3,000. So, uh, but one of the best advices I got is uh, sprinting with other writers. Oh my yeah. gosh. I, if I am totally having three non-productive days in a row, I would call my friend and say, hey, can you meet me at Starbucks? I have to write and get my word count done today. And just being in a different place, or sometimes she'd say, no, but I'll come over and we can write. I'm like, cool, can't do that now. But we would sit at the dining room table and set the timer and the words would just flow. And she would leave and I'm like, hey, I'm on a roll. I might even write a couple thousand more. And that always works for me. It's being able to be with another creative. Now I do it online with um three friends and we'll do that it's like hey who wants to sprint today and that works i'm a big uh writer's retreat person oh like, yeah I get so much I, done on those. I, you get so much done and so i, I do these retreats mm -hmm. with, with you know several different pods of people and my one pod of people and i like i i cannot recommend this enough in this new world we're in so we're on discord and i don't know if you've ever used the discord app but it's you mm -hmm. it's a it's a social chat it's a just audio. I think you, there's a video component that you can use, but I log in and then they log in. And so we hear each other through our computer. So I hear my friends typing away, which is like, right. well, they're typing. I'm not going to you know, stop typing. Exactly. And, then, and it's really cool. It really yeah. works. That's and then you to do that on Zoom. And someone's like, um, you know, what is the, what do you, you know, what's the name of the blah, blah, blah. And, you know, or, yeah. Oh, I just got the email. And it's just like a writer's retreat. And I find I, we've been doing that in the mornings and, I, I I think that's part of why my productivity is ticked up. It's just like a brain trick. The sound really works. Okay. Best advice, oh, worst advice. Yeah, I've heard a lot of advice. Uh, <laughs> since for, since uh, I was started coming to my first uh, chapter reading back in like 2006, I think. Um, I, I have heard stuff where people were telling me that I have to plot. And uh, for me, I'm like, well, I can't. Well, like I said, I had to, it, it goes in my brain and then it comes out in a big rush. So I was having people telling me, if you want to be more productive and get your books done, you need to plot your books, every little thing. And I tried it once and I set up this binder and was seen. I couldn't write the book because I thought, well, it's done. Because it's yeah, all right. <laughs> You're done. Like, what are you talking about? Um, yeah. So I think, I think, we're, like, definitely, like, Zoe is the one that pointed me in the direction of write better, faster. About the time my mother died, and I was pretty like emotionally right. just, yeah, I was done. And uh, she said, you know, you just try it out. And I thought I would try it out, and it like blew my mind um, that what works for some people doesn't work for me. Like for example, Zoe was saying she goes to a conference and she writes a book. I go to a conference because I have empathy in my top five. I'm drained. I don't want to, I'm done for two weeks. Everybody's emotions around me has sucked me creatively dry. So um, it's now I'm more like the, definitely the best advice is learning. You have to work with what your strengths are to make it what works for you. So um, I can focus on a writing sprint for 15 minutes and then I need to take a 30 minute break, which is really bad. <laughs> but it's very, and I write it down. So if I'm, even if I'm not sprinting with someone, I have this like little notebook and I write down my start word count, set the timer, right? It was like, it's like this game. Yep. Where I'm like, let's see if I can beat that because I'm sort of competitive with myself that way, like getting a higher score or something. And that's what's working for me. But yeah, I guess it was when I was first learning out uh, is to, yeah, definitely button chair, hands on keyboard. So I'm staring at a blinking cursor, getting nothing done. And uh, 
yeah, I'm trying to, you need to plot, you need to do this. Like I've heard a lot of, you got to find what works for you. I think is the best thing I've heard. Amy, you're doing this really cool thing where you're, you're using old planners, old planners. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a tiny little bit about that. So I, I can't remember. It was uh, Sarah Cannon on heart breathing. So I've tried to be, I love stickers. I don't, like I love them. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> I even have my planner here. So, um, yeah, where I write notes because I was having little notebooks, every, and so now I, I try to do planning. Yeah, I've been trying to. <laughs> there's like a whole group. Well, we just want to be productive. Guys. We just want to be productive, right? So, so they're all like, we what are you doing with? Also, yeah, I create every tab now I've turned from like the month into a book. I put the characters' pictures, I'm very visual. So there's the characters from the shopping book. I'm just what I'm calling it up. <laughs> Terry is like, this is magic. I think this might be magic. <laughs> and the calendar turns into their little timeline, and I can write all my notes in one spot because I couldn't do weekly spreads and putting all my appointments into stuff. So, uh, yeah, no, that's okay. So I took the planners instead of wasting money, which I felt bad about, and I turned it into something that works for me. With And I can use all my stickers and tape, and I'm not committed to a date, but it's here and it works. <laughs> I freaking love that idea. I love great. that it, idea. It, they were like, just, I want I was a picture of it, like a real picture, not through the camera. I want a picture of it. Okay. I want to see I it. Sarah, Sarah Cannon from Heart Breathing had one where she took an old planner. Yeah, oh, like I love that. it. And she turned it into a plotting book. And I'm like, that's, I have all these planners that I would buy to try to be productive. And then they sit there and do nothing. And now they're plotting books. And I'm like, I don't feel like I'm wasting money. And I'm using stickers and I'm all happy. Yeah, different colored pens. So it satisfies that without committing to a date. That's yeah, my problem. <laughs> and you know the stuff. I just want to use the stuff. I mean, like, yeah, I, I whatever. This is not a conversation about planners, though we could do that. <laughs> so I have, I have two more questions that kind of uh, bottleneck. So I'm going to kind of ask both of them, and people can answer them together if it work, what, however it works for you. So I want to talk about burnout, writer's block, and like self care. So have you ever had writer's block or burnout? Like looking back, how did you know it was coming on? And what what do you do to to get yourself out of burnout or to manage it or manage writer's blocks? Maybe that's let's do writer's blocks later if we get a chance. So let's just talk about burnout and self-care. What like what how have you have you felt it and what'd you do about it? So again, sorry, Terry, you're my first one. That's okay. Um I actually, yeah, I just, I feel like I kind of just came out of a cycle of burnout. Um, after last year doing all those books, um, first of the year, I got really super sick. And so I was like, huh, I wonder if there's a connection there. <laughs> so um, as far as what I'm doing to try to get out of it is um, I, well, first of all, even even though I'm not going anywhere, I still get up every day. It's pretty much at the same time that I was getting up before all this stuff happened. Um, I get dressed in pajamas. I put on my daytime pajamas, but um, I'm still kind of just getting dressed and still getting up and doing something. Um, I have started addressing some of my other creative outlets. So um, I'm teaching, I just got a guitar for my birthday. And so I'm teaching myself how to play guitar. And um, my daughters are really into painting. And so I'm trying to do some more painting. Um, I haven't done a lot of it yet. So I think what the way I know that it's going to come on next time is when I really just, I dread going back to my book. You know, when it's just like, oh my flipping God, stop this nonsense from happening. Just get it done. And I think that's where I was, but I didn't know that's where I was before. So I think I'll just pay more attention to when that happens, try to go, 
okay, go back to go 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 grab my washi tape and <laughs> grab some paper and stuff and do some stickering. <laughs> so, as far as um, self care, I think probably one of the things that I need to do that I've noticed out of out of all of this stuff for sure is I like to think of myself as an introverted person, but I really need to talk to people. I mean, I'm like so tired of hearing my family's voice. <laughs> I don't so, know what you mean. <laughs> I, think, I, I think the biggest thing I'm going to take away as far as like self-care go is just force myself to go ahead and just talk to people. Like, it's okay. I can still go back home. I can spend like 15 minutes outside with people and then spend like two hours, you know, in my house recovering from it. And that's okay. So. Yeah, I remember like the Zoom, the new Zoom and, you know, Hangouts and Google Meet, all that. It's changed the landscape a little bit for us as writers who, you know, work from home and, and have limited, you know, peopling happening. It's really changed it a little bit. Um, okay, uh, where am I going? Melissa, how about you? Burnout and self-care. Well, burnout, um, really, after all of the going 95 miles an hour for my life for the longest period of time, having a, a chance to like relax sent me into a tailspin. You know, like I didn't have 50 bajillion things going on. So I was suddenly in this, what do I do? What do I do? Oh, I don't want to do anything. So uh, for me, it, it was a real struggle. And I found ways of pushing past that with um, doing other forms of, like Terry said, doing other forms of creativity. Um, talking with other people, trying to spend more time doing the subbing where I can be around the kids, doing more mm -hmm. of that type of, you know, things that give me joy. So I'm outside, you know, every day looking at the alligators and and doing things like that. Yes, I do. I know what you mean. Alligators. <laughs> the smallest one is about a foot and a half and the biggest one is about five. <laughs> um, so I, I try and do those things. And for me, that Physical exercise has become the biggest for me for self-care, riding my bike, walking around the neighborhood, uh, because they feel very trapped. And especially during this pandemic, you feel like you're trapped at home. You can't leave the house. And I, you know, have lived the last, you know, 40 years in a state where winter was six months long and we couldn't go out. So here I can go outside. I've been able to go outside. So I'm walking a lot more. I'm trying to get outside. I'm trying to do things. Uh, that will keep me busy and keep me physically active because otherwise I walk the floors and mm -hmm. I need to do something that's going to bring me that. Um, and, you know, doing other things, talking to other people, doing this. This was a huge, huge yeah. thing. This has been a great thing, Jessica. Thank you so much for organizing all of this. Uh, Melissa, you remind me a little bit of that, like, adage where like if you want something done give it to a busy woman it felt like I mean in the stories that you were just telling it, it felt like you were the busy woman that could constantly get stuff done until suddenly you're in a one-room hotel writing <laughs> with your cat and your dog like there's a limit to how much one woman can do so it's that's, and that's the other thing. at that point I just kind of went crash yeah well I, I don't I don't blame you at all how about you Hildy um Every year at around December, I would have deadlines and I really had such a hard time doing it because in my mind, I guess I, it's the end of the year, I close out everything and for, I am burnt out. I have done, I don't know, sometimes eight books, sometimes six, you know, depending, but I'm done. So now I've, I've said, not the, now I make sure that when I set my schedule for the year, December, I leave open. If there's anything due in the new year, it better be due. I don't know, in February. <laughs> because uh, what I do too, if I do have a deadline for January, I have it on my schedule to get writing, get it, you know, make sure I write it in October. So it's done in right. November. It's because I know myself and I know that by December I'm burnt out and I need some time off. I still work and I still might even write a few days, but it's not something that I have to do. Um, we have a question from an audience member. Shoot. Technology, where did it go? Um, D asks, if any of you work outside the home, how do you balance writing and family? That's a great question. Well, I can answer that when I first started writing, I actually wrote more or longer books when I worked. I worked at, uh, for the government 
but I was outside the military installation. So I wrote, I'm not a morning person. So I wrote, I stayed after hours, an hour every day after work and wrote there in my office. I had brought my laptop, brought it out and wrote. I already had a, whatever scene I was going to write. And as soon as that scene was done, I'd head home. Sometimes it would be an hour. Sometimes it would be 45 minutes. But I did it that way. If not, then I would wait till I get home and after dinner. And, and you have to be kind to your family. You haven't seen each other all day. So it's more like, do you guys mind if I take an hour and go write? And usually they don't care. you know. But if you don't ask, they'll be like, man, mom or honey, are you going to come sit with me? But if you ask them in advance and say, hey, do you mind if I take an hour just to right. sit down and write? They're, they're, they'll be fine for that time. But don't overdo it and think, oh, every night I'm going to sit down at 7 and write till I go to sleep. Because you're neglecting your family and other things in your personal life. Because working eight hours means that you're gone for 10 to 11 and then to, you know, extend that further, it's not kind to the others or to yourself. So yeah. to me, it's it's not a lot, an hour here or there, and then maybe it, on your day off, then you can take three hours and work. Uh, how about you, Amy? Um, so now we're going to add the question about balancing home and family, and particularly, you know, maybe pre-pandemic, current pandemic, but then also your burnout and self-care question. Can you mash it all together? I will try my best. <laughs> um, I was I was working a job when I first uh, started writing, um, and I really don't remember how I managed that because I had my children were babies too. I think I was just staying up because I was feeding children and I was working, and it was just it was very sporadic. I didn't have the same deadlines, um, and then I stopped working, and I wasn't working when I signed with Harlequin, and my kids were in school, and I found time. To write during the day so I could actually sleep and spend time with them and stuff. So I try, I'm more of a daytime writing person. So during the pandemic or before the pandemic, they were all at school and work and I wrote. Now they're all here all the time. The time. So yeah. <laughs> everywhere. So <laughs> I, I, that's why I have to, I have to set up a structured schedule for my son who has autism anyway. So I find that I work early in the morning. I get up when my husband gets up and I work and I never thought that I would do that, but it's nice and quiet and I can get my stuff done. Burnout was, yeah, definitely 2018 was a bad year. Um, I lost my mom. I had been taking care of her since 2016 and she died of cancer and uh, she was 62. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. So yeah, it was it was a horrible. I was I was at a loss, and two things brought me out of that, and that was write better, faster, and working out. I found my gym. I started boot camp classes. I, I mean, this isn't going to work for everyone because I, I do say learning doing write better, faster. My strengths it, it works for me. I needed the physical activity to help burn off the depression, the anxiety, the everything I was feeling. And it got my mind right back into this happy place. And honestly, my family even saw a difference because uh, for so many years, I was caregiver to my mom. I was trying to take care of my dad. I had a son on the spectrum. Like it was just a lot oh, of stuff. And then when she died, it just, yeah, it, something had to give. And so, um, yeah, my family's like, you're a lot happier. You know, I am. Feel, I'm getting back into my more productive. It's taken some, still some time as I learn, but uh, yeah, it was, it was, I was producing a lot, but yeah, I was just going, 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 and trying to keep everything together, and I couldn't, I just couldn't. Go ahead, Terry. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, when I get super busy, I don't have a job outside of my house, but I do, um, I do homeschool two children, and I sometimes take care of my mom too. So I mean, those are kind of like work things to do but um certainly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> word sprints word sprints are awesome like if i know okay i've got 15 minutes i'll set my timer but i make sure like the whole concept of a word sprint is you do nothing else but write so i don't check facebook i don't um i don't um call anybody i don't go on my email but just for 15 minutes i just write and that's all I do, I don't go back and change anything or erase anything. So I word sprints helps a lot when I'm super busy. And yeah, I think if you're working, you could probably do the same thing. 
Yeah. The key is that designated bit of time, right? And and Facebook and social media are the enemy of productivity by Absolutely. a mile. So if you're if you're struggling with a job and a family and you've got limited time, you've got to make that half hour count and turn, right. turn it off. And it might be that you go back old school and do paper and pen as opposed to typing at your computer. And I mean, sometimes that actually may be good because when you type it back in your computer, that's your second draft. You're kind of editing as you go along too. So, but yeah, you have to get away from distractions. Yeah. Melissa, did you have anything to add about um, the question about, uh, you know, sort of like time management, family job as a person, family job alligators? Do you have <laughs> alligators? Well, they have their own jobs. Um, I, Really, when I was working full time, and I did, I I fully admit that I really shafted my family during that time. They really suffered uh, because I was grading school papers while I was eating my dinner. I was, you know, doing all of those things. It's the what we put our mind forth and what we're willing to do. And so, you know, I was willing to stay up a little bit later. I wrote during my lunch. Every teacher never gets a lunch, but during my five minutes of eating, I was writing. And what Terry said about going old school, I would write it on a piece of notebook paper because then it would, at least it's something tangible. When I would go to my doctor's office and I'm waiting in the doctor's office to go wait to see the physician, I would have my notebook or I'd have my computer and I'd be writing there. It's, you know, using every single minute of my day. So it burns me out and it will because you can't continue it for a long period of time, but for short periods of time, it's a great way to get things done. Guys, we are done, right, Jessica? Do we? We're done at two thirty. Yeah, we are. We have enough time, though. If everybody wants to go around and let us know what what's next for them, what books we okay, should look good. For. Okay, so yeah, exactly. Let say our goodbyes and let us know what's coming out next and maybe what you're working on or something you're excited about. Go, Tara. Okay. Hey, um, um, I just finished releasing a uh, a book. Actually, it's past Tuesday called Wild Horses in Love, about two wolf shifters, and it's in the Millie Tate and Share World Paranormal Dating Agency. And I, right now, am starting a whole new project, a duology. I think that's what you call it, two books, a duology. Mm -hmm. And uh, going back to my love of dragons, and it's all about these women warriors who can't fall in love, but of course, you know, a good looking guy comes along and she falls in love. And so she has to decide to be loyal to her tribe and her warrior people or to fall in love. And that should be out in June. Oh, wow. That sounds great. Thank you so much for being here, Terry. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you. I look forward to when we can see each other in person. Yeah, uh, thank Melissa. you very much. <laughs> Melissa, how about you? Well, I'm currently working on my Christmas uh, addition to an anthology that we did last year about a cowboy under the mistletoe. And so I am writing the sequel to Broken Dreams, which was my bull rider who had a broken neck and was paralyzed after a rodeo accident. And so I'm writing the sequel to a story and it will be out in October. Amazing. Well, thanks for being here and taking the time. It's been great talking to you. Uh, Hildy. Yes, I am. I was, this was a lot of fun. I appreciate doing this. And I just had a release on April 23rd, a hellish Highlander just was released onto the Highlands. <laughs> and this is the third book in my Clan Ross series. And he is the youngest of three brothers and out for revenge. And his story, I think, will touch a lot of people. And so I'm, I'm really excited about that. And right now I'm actually working on some Westerns, getting them uh, rewritten and hopefully we'll be getting them out in May, hope to get three out in May. So that's what I'm working on right now. Oh my gosh, you're a busy lady. It's been fun being on these panels with you too, Hildy. It's, I, I, <laughs> I'm happy when I see your name on the... <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Amy, how about you? Um, I just had my 25th Harlequin medical release this May. Uh, baby bombshell for the Dr. Prince. Um, I love those posts. Uh, <laughs> There's so them. much packed in there. <laughs> Um, I have an August release, uh, Reunited with the Hot Shot Surgeon, and then the book that I, right now, I've turned in the revisions, so just waiting to hear from the editor, uh, it's come, slotted to come out in November, uh, a reunion, a, wed a wedding, a family, that's it. 
a reunion and a wedding and a, a family? That's the title. Yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's a lot. Like I to learn, I was like, oh. <laughs> you you have a do you, you write romantic suspense with a I do and I um it's with Desiree Holt, uh, which oh. was a kid the world and it's it's moved over. I think Decadent has the yeah, Decadent has the platform now. So it's with the Phoenix Agency and I have one more book to finish with that. Arctic Embers, I don't know yet. Hopefully soon. When that'll be coming out. Okay. Well, good. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, thanks, everybody, uh, for hanging out. Remember, authors, to go in and, and just chat on the, the Facebook group. Um, let people know where to find you. Thanks for hanging out, guys. I don't know how to hang up. <laughs> Is that it? There we go. Wait. Oh, Terry figured it out.